Okay, welcome. Uh, welcome to this uh, joint tech talk from the NLUG and Competa in whatever order you will you, you, you like to have that. Uh, because of the, the current, uh, the recent developments in uh, certificate lands, uh, this might be a very interesting talk. Mm -hmm. And we didn't know that uh, half a year ago when I asked Toast to give a talk or give a successor of a talk that he gave at the NLUG earlier. Um, but with the Diginota uh, soap going on, it, uh, it's, it's pretty interesting. So, uh, without further ado, Thijs Hagen, uh, well, he, uh, maybe he can introduce himself. Uh, he's a long time security guy and I know him for a for very long time in, in, in certificates, so go ahead. Okay. Um, I have a mic here, so if, if that bothers you, please uh, say so, then uh, I turn it off. <laughs> I think the amount of people here are uh, not so many, but on the other end, uh, it is broadcasted and in this way it uh, goes easily on, uh, on the network. So every question you will ask me will be broadcasted as well. Okay. Um, I will give you a global crash course on security. That's the first part. And uh, after that we will have a uh, little, little break. And uh, the other part is uh, a follow-up of the statistics I did in uh, November. So for the first part the, uh, the crash course is uh, quite similar <coughs> as uh, we, you have uh, been shown in uh, November last year. And about the security part, uh, the statistics, uh, there have been since that date and also before that, uh, quite some, uh, some investigations, some assessments uh, uh, done by me via some other web websites. And I will show you the results and I will make some comments on it. And you are also invited to make some comments on that. Um, my email address is written here. And I don't want to show it again after this slide. Um, if you send me hate mail, as some people did in uh, November last year, then please uh, send that to no reply at turnus.org. And uh, I have installed that address, and it has been up to now very helpful for me. So far, the introduction, uh, yeah, what can I tell about myself? Not many. Please. Do some googling and you will see what I've done in the past. Um, first, some, uh, you will see uh, below here slides. This is uh, uh, 88 and you will also see that it is the second slide and it is now minus 6. So I'm not planning to show you all the slides I have, but I have them here at hand. So if comments uh, are such that I have some preparation done in the past for that, and I can easily show them up again. Um, some books. Uh, theory. It's an old book, but it's still valid, very valid. So if people uh, uh, like that, please read that book. It's that thick. For the, uh, for the others, uh, most of us, I think, uh, most of the technicians, this is something you have to know and have to read. They are available uh, in digital format as an iBook, so you can download them, and some are free, some others not. Um, this book I came across uh, very recently. Uh, this is a uh, really management book. It's that thick. Uh, that's okay. I. Uh, it's a very good book. Uh, it's not very technical but it gives you all the politics which goes along with uh, risk management on the network. 
For non-technicals, you and me, this is a very good uh, bed legacy, as I use them. And in February, there's a new book from Rules. Please read that book. Get hold on that. About uh, the security stuff, first a remark. And the remark is, um, everything is based on trust. And trust is between your ears. Trust is very hard to get. And it's very, very easy to lose, as we have seen now already. So, trust is a difficult thing. <clears throat> and it's purely emotional. And we try to reach those trust via technical measurements. And those technical measurements help you, or don't help you if they are misconfigured. And about the last thing is what I'm mainly talking about. Get your configurations, get your work done well. Security is also to do with blocking. And we can learn from the physical lock world a lot. The first locking system was pretty easy. Here is one. And that one is very similar in essence as to the cylindric locks we have been came across later on. Still you see that the amount of bit strings is pretty low. All of them, even the lower one here, which is based on 128 bit strings, it's pretty good, is pretty easy to break. Bumping is one example. Bumping is very easy. If the key fits and it is done on a 999 key, as we call them, lower, with kinetic energy, and the back end of your screwdriver will open the door without a trace in a few seconds, five seconds. And that's valid for 95% of all your locks in Holland, certainly. You can buy them, those keys, a set of 15 keys or something like that, for 40 euros on a German website. That one is the Winkhaus key. That one is based on encrypted negotiations with the door lock. And it, the door lock is opened via solenoid. So, with a mouse net, it's easy to open. <laughs> Winkhaus has improved that lock lately after a long struggle with the tools, three owls in Amsterdam, two <coughs> Cars are pretty much well secured for the door after a long, long, long history. However, you, nowadays you have the electronic control unit in your car. Most cars, modern cars have that. Well, you can influence or even do certain things with that electronic device in your car from a remote distance. And they have done that. Here you see the meter. It's 120 miles an hour. All backwards. The message says analyze the new modern car it's also done from a remote. So what about you cars strolling by and you say, hello, I know you. Hello, I don't know you. Hello, come to Compita. <laughs> what can we learn from that? We can make arrangements and the arrangements are such that it is, has some relation with the protected good. So for a bank, it's better as for a login name or whatever. And sometimes, most of the times, you don't understand that in one place, a grab on the password can be used elsewhere as well. So you can say, okay, it doesn't bother me, but it bothers someone else. 
every, every technique, as we have seen with the techniques in the physical world, have a limited time frame. Every lock system can be broken. And I will, share, I will give you some news about that later on. So, stay in touch. Security certification is the driving force. Also in the physical lock world. And there, in that part, you have you have a Stichting Waarmerk something. So there is a certification authority there taking care that the stars mean something. In our world, in our digital world, with the CAs, the certificate authorities, we don't have that. So here you have the main issue of all my talking. You mind you, authentication is a complex thing. And we will get to that later on very much. About communication, your login and your password. I will give you a little anecdote. It's from Nick Helm. And he said, okay. I needed a login name and I needed a password. And the password should have eight characters. At least. So what did he choose? Well, he chose Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Eight characters. He tried it and he got the message back. That's not a good password. Because you should have alphas in it and numeric values. <coughs> so seven, he changed that to seven. The word seven to seven, and it worked again. Um, I got an envelope today from an organization, and that envelope. That size. And it had my login name. That was easy to guess. Namely, my membership number. Mm. And a password. <laughs> Looked like an MDV5 password. So, probably if I try it, I have the algorithm to get all the passwords for all the members of that organization. My main concern is that envelope was open, not sealed. Some organizations take care of you. Encryption. For encryption, use the crash course. You need random numbers and make sure that they are random. You need primes. Make sure that there are primes and well done. And a good hash function. Not MD5, not SHA1. The password function, the hash function, should have no collisions at all. Probably impossible, okay. But don't underestimate it. Now, anyone here? What the birthday paradox is? <coughs> Should I explain it? One? Okay, try to explain it. Birthday. What's the chance, say 50%, that there are two with the same birth date in this room? No. Yeah. <laughs> you think, okay, I need 50%. Mm. 150 persons? Maybe a little less, 100? No? It's 23 persons. So don't estimate, underestimate the collision of birthdays here in this room. <laughs> don't do that with hash functions as well. <coughs> Public encryption. I have to walk through. A little bit. You need a public key, private one, and here is how it is. I don't go into deep with that for now. And 
the private key. Make sure that the private key is kept secret. I tried to order a certificate from a certificate authority, a big one. The RA asked me, say to me, said to me, you can get it, but we make the private key and the public key for you. You will get that in your post. <laughs> this is how CAs work. And choose a random. And that random is a hard one. But the main one is make sure about your private keys and that random generator. Is it really random? How difficult is it to make it random? Did you ever check it? We tried with CR30 in the past to make a new root key. We needed a random number. It cost us uh, a week to get it, to make sure that it was random. A week. And we knew what we were doing. So, I told you already about the hash function. That's about enough for it. And I go through to the digital signature. How is it done? The public key, you make a hash. Those two functions have nothing to do with each other. They are separate. The public key will encrypt the hash. Or the, the oh wait, it's the other way around. I have to go down. Anyway, the private key will hash that to make sure that the message has a key, has a hash, and the hash is encrypted and sent with the public key encrypted to the receiver, or the other way around. And the public key will decrypt the hash, so you know the hash, and make sure that you do the same hash in your message. You can say, hey, those two are equal, if there is no collision. So there you see why it is important. And if they are again, then the message is untouched or unchanged. That's the way it works. Come on. Hash functions are used for signatures. MD5 is broken. There are still MD5s around. Don't use them. SH1 is banned because we theoretically can think of, we have a demonstration of that, that it is insecure from January 2011. And if you see later on in my presentation with the statistics, the far majority still uses SH1. Also with DNSSEC. Encryption functions to avoid. Tiffy Hillman, because it has a man in the middle problem. Someone can stand between it and can sniff it or change it. <coughs> RSA is there, but it has a small size problem with signatures. And there is a mathematical structure problem. That's an important one. With two signatures, you can compute it. So you can glue two messages together to make sure it's still sure that that message is, can be unchanged, seen as unchanged. So there is an RSA problem there. Okay. Let's go to the certificates. The world of the certificates. The certificate has a public key from the owner. And that's all. So that public key should belong to that individual or that owner server. It has some owner information and the certificate is signed by a certificate authority. So you depend 
on the certificate authority if that certificate, a digital certificate, is the one of that particular owner. That's one. You depend that the private key of that owner, of that public key from that certificate, is kept secret. And I doubt that in the majority of servers around here in the world, that private key is well kept somewhere. It's hard to do, but it should, for your company depends on it, as we have seen digital noter, digital with uh, DigiNoter. So, be careful about your private key for yourself, for your client certificate, but also for your server. You want to say, okay, my certificate is stolen. You have to refocus it sometimes. You never know when, but when it is, you have to revoke. Say, this certificate, with this certi serial number, is from now invalid. So you depend on the revocation possibilities of your certificate authority. For someone who reads that and gets that certificate, will go to the certificate authority, say, hey, here I have a serial number of that certificate, is it still valid? And he will say, Yes, or it will say no. I will probably say no, only. So you get an answer of that. So you depend that that certificate authority, the OCSP server, the revocation server, is working well, immediately, within a second. So if you go to say a look about this Revocation service. Does he have that? Some don't. And the certificate will have some extra information. One most pure is EV and DV. Extended, validated, will say the name of that company is on the cert and is validated. It's really that company. Not only that server. No, it is also that company. So the name of that company should belong to that domain. And that is validated by the CA if they do their work right. The other, they say, is only domain validated. It will say the domain whose name is there. And I will come up to later to a lot a whole lot of mistakes there. <coughs> the mistake in short is called wild card. For much more is one host name or so. <coughs> it's standardized. It's X509 and another one competitor is PGP. Both are standardized. An example. Here we have an example of a client certificate. And I looked it up. It's just from my database, the email database. It's from Philip Gurry in this case. So I talked to him uh, a lot in the past. <coughs> and you can see, for nowadays, it's 2000, it's expires on 2007. Which will not say that that particular certificate is revoked. It's still valid. For if I throw it away, I cannot read his emails anymore. So you have to keep them around. They're still filled. If there is a revoke, then there is something else. Then maybe you should doubt the, the emails from him, him in the past. Maybe. Or maybe not. And that's called trust. So it doesn't say it's not trusted. The trust belongs to you and not to the system who can say it different and can use different words. Okay, how to manage that? Here's my own one from my email. And you can see here, it's written on the name, organization is here Opaga, and I use an OCSP to validate. 
you have to turn that on. If you don't, you can come to errors that maybe your certificate is invalid. So, where to look for? We have came across a little, a, little, a little bit. Make sure that the name is there. And some servers will, some servers will use the host name as common name as well. So it's easy to make mistakes here. Does the owner match what you think it should be? And we give you later on some examples of it. Why you think mm, maybe not? But if you, know, you need to know too much, you say, oh yes, it is still okay. Is it domain validated or is it extended? How much can I trust it and for what? Is the CA trusted? Trust belongs to you, not to the system who says it is trusted or not trusted. It's you. So you must make sure that those CAs you trust are in your database. And I know some manufacturers who change that trust. It's not that, for instance. So if you change it, hey, I add some trusted CAs on it, or I make some CAs untrusted, you come to the next day, it's updated your system, and the old file is back again. This expired in some easy amount of time. One, two years, two years maximum. Not 30 years, not 20 years, not 15 years. At least one revocation method. At least one server who should get back to you. Preferably two. Is that privacy, privacy well protected? And is it really made by the owner, not by the CA at some point of time who is able to copy it for whatever reason? So what we learned is how security works in the theory, how easy it is to hack, how much you are depending on trust and an enforcement of all regulations. And the enforcement is a big pitfall nowadays. We can go back to later on. Okay, I went this time also to the signatures of servers I had in my test set. And I came across uh, signatures with the version dates of the software which was used on that particular server, key software. I know signatures are sometimes empty and sometimes they can lie about it. That's okay. So it's just a hint, it's just trust or no trust. I did it on 160 websites and 20 of them had no signature. The other 140 signatures, you can trust them or you can't trust them, I don't know. But these are the pictures I got. 27% of Microsoft is still using Microsoft Release 5.0. It comes in somewhere from the years 2000. It's 10 years old. I got the release dates from Googling. So I'm not pretty sure of those release dates, but here is an hint. 97% 2003. Here's the G note, for instance. 7.5 is the newest one. Only 13%. <coughs> and that's also old. 2008. There have been probably some updates on that. But you see how old those sucker is. Apache uses 50% of the machinery use Apache. So they have quite an enormous market share. 
There is one still using the oldest one, 1.3, comes from 2004. Look above. It's pretty new, isn't it? And government, 2005 mainly. 2044. Majority is 2.2.8. That's from 2008. The highest, 2.2.20. That's from NL and Labs. 3 DSD system. Apache is pretty much related to that release, so don't go into details for that. <coughs> and then I go to the Open SSL one. Mainly also Apache. Releases I found. 2003. 09.07. 09.09.08.2005. And what? 1.1.1.2011. Here is the big trouble. 0909A is from November 2005. Uh, the C number from the Debian event is later. It doesn't differ so much. And I looked at PHP 4.4, still well in use. In finances. Majority is using 5.2 dot whatever. The latest is 5.3. Okay. <coughs> I have a unique example. And the example is Ideal. I know Ideal is not a bank. I know Ideal is not an internet bank. I know they don't have money on the bank or something like that to protect that. But they say we are in for security for banks on the bank level. Remind you, we are talking about trust. Here is our trust. Ideal, Apache 2.0. PHP 4. Open SSL 0909A8A. Well, they are lucky. That's just before the Debian debacle is dot six dot C. So we are lucky. They are better as that one. But we are talking about trust. This company is trying to tell trust. And here are the figures. Why not change it? Why not bring it up to date? I give you now here in the table. That's uh, my own systems. Here is the May 2008. So everything should be above that release number. Open SSH. Release I found on my systems, which I run with FC 12, 15, and Ubuntu. So most of them are half year old, on the oldest. Here are the numbers which I think should be acceptable. Lower is that, I don't think they are acceptable. And I don't have to protect the world. There is a uh, reference system I keep, it's FC7. That's an old one. It's from 2008. This is unacceptable. And if you look back to the other systems I showed you later on, earlier on, you see that th there are many, 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 too many below that. Okay. Back to the end user. How does we protect? We have the URL, and we choose from that the, the host name and the domain name. We have a DNS maps to a DNS to map the IP address in the domain name. And you must make sure that that's correct done. 
With DNS, we have a cache poisoning problem. problem. Someone else can implement inject some fake IP addresses, and there you go, wrong address. So we need DNSSEC. However, with DNSSEC, let's say, made operational a year ago, however, they forgot to make, to validate, really, to make sure that the name they have really belongs to that company and really belongs to that IP address. It's only mentioned for cache portioning, not so much more. So we don't have much there and we need that information. The other part is get the server document, secure it and choose an, choose an protocol layer to protect you. And do the same thing for your email Terminal access, VPN, etc., etc., and don't forget to do that later. The last one as well. First step is DNSSEC. Is that IP address really you? In 2010, year ago, we made that operation, and I will show you later on some statistics about that. The test is made in uh, October, and only 3% really used it at that time. And the world has not changed much from that. <coughs> year later, same thing, only a very few. From my test set, there were some new ones, CWI, RIPE, SCDM, CSET was already there, and MLAPS was, was also already there. But those are close to the intersect of thing, the big entity, the three the guys who do. And my problem is that none of the banks, none of the government installations is using the intersect. Yeah, question. Um, does SDN already accept um, new keys to be signed? Because yeah. as last as, as I know, it's still not accepted. The interface is not there yet. As far as I know, it's, it, should, it should be there. They should have it operational now. It's not for nothing that is the initiative. But there are other ways. And, uh, uh, let me put it this way. There are, uh, DOS is, is currently not providing in a way for the NS providers to upload the keys. Okay. I would say uh, providers yell. Yell. But there are ways to escape from that. Here is CSR, for instance, and they are not there. They are doing their business with an, uh, with Bit uh, as a provider. But uh, uh, Mr. Van der Rijn did it, and he's here in the room. Uh, he made an escape, to make sure that there is uh, there is something there. So he could, uh, he was being able to do that, and I will show you some some st statistics about that the figures. Okay, you are in your browser and is there anybody here in the room who knows this second little key? Yes, the yes, second check. Yeah. You have to install that. You don't need the arm. And you get a warning. This is supposed to be green. I don't know how you see it. Um, the NSEC validator. It's an add-on I got from there. And you are also able to download it and to use that. And that gives you some more feelings of what is going on. Not much more as a feeling. Trust is still with you. The figures last year. And here is CSR already. You see? And some other ones here, I can, and I see. That was the test I did last year. I did a more extensive test this year, for this more op operation is already one year going on, and not much of a change. Look at the 
the first one. Come on. Yes. We have to go <coughs> here. See who we are. It's a new one. Is there? Google? Out. Twitter? No. DJJ? No. Did you know that? Okay. The test was done in <laughs> August, half of August. <laughs> Over your chip card? No. Adio? No. Triodas? No. It's a bank. Start.com? No. But on the other hand, you should remember your Start.com. I'll come back to that later. And so you said, of course, it was already there. New ones, right? And SED. And then hell no clubs. The rest is still the same. <coughs> So, still a long way to go, and uh, we have to, we need that. We have to make sure that our IP address is the one which belongs to the domain name, the host name, on that certificate later on. Second step, SSL. We need that to identify and to authenticate for entrance and to secure the communication later on. Does that match the host name? And this is the, the intersect part. Does that match the owner? Is that owner the, really the one I need to know and I need to communicate with? And if that information is correct, is that really well done with that certificate authority? I can tell you I tried to get for 100 euros, so why the hell, to get an EV certificate. All what I needed to show was a reference in a telephone book. Extend it, it's more than you have to do usually. And a shitload of money. And yeah, usually for that, it's 100 bucks, so what the hell. Check the trust of your CA. And again, trust is yours. You should trust it, not someone else who tells them to trust it. Check the revocation. Check the signature algorithm. No MD5. No SHA1. So, last week, I got a question, I'm not on Facebook. Uh, please <coughs> join me at Facebook. So I said to myself, oh well, let's try. <laughs> so the first thing I said, okay, Facebook. And I must say, Facebook, the certificate and the host was okay. One of the best. However, to do the addition, I had to go to a channel and the channel for Facebook's using channels, and that's the server, not the server, and it's o.14.channel.facebook. And but my browser said, hey, hey, this certificate is only valid for star.channel.facebook.com. So if the o dot was missing, it was okay. And I tell you this, not that I don't like to be on Facebook, but I tell you this, the star, the white card, that's a problem for end users. And I will go later on to tell you about how that can be misused. Here's the chain. So all seems okay, but here is the real problem. So far, lesson to learn from Facebook. So, Firisai. Big company. Lots of search around from Firisai. Lots of servers around. DNSSEC, it's okay. So that's okay. And then we ask Colonel to see what we got for a certificate. 
Dat is de nieuwe verisign dat kan. Oké, okay, dat match. Oké. Okay. Strong, cipher. Dat is ook oké. Okay. Is het bij verisign? Also oké. Okay. En de certificate is also signed by verisign. Same company. Self signed, I say. Why the hell? It's trust. I trust it, but it's self signed. If they are, in my opinion, if they have done it well, go to another CA and ask to sign their certificate. Why not? They cannot validate themselves. No, they have to, to go to another one to validate them. The rest is okay. <coughs> See you, sir. Okay. You well? Match. Strong savoring. Okay. Issue to see you, sir. Inc. Issued by an other CA. Isn't it? Root CA. As all the CAs, they have signed their own root. However, a root CA says something differently. In the old days, when you tried to do things, the default value for the CA was root CA. They didn't bother to change it at that time. Forgivable, but it was a very early state. But still, they're using that. SH1. And valid. That's okay. Not much to say about it. So, that guy. Another CA. This is after the fact. After the discovery for the hacking and the publications of the hacking. They got a new CA, a new certificate from Komodo. <laughs> Komodo <laughs> had that same problem as Diginotor in March this year. Maybe they talk to them and say, hey, did you get that trouble? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Can you learn from that? Etc. Etc. Oh, by the way, we need another set. You can see it is valid from the 12th of September this year. So it's pretty recent. You see also that it's blank. So I'm not sure what the rest of it did. But also note this one. A weak certificate. They shoot it now. Here, part car. Again. It's hard. It's a hard rule. It's hard to get it right. Come on. Next slide, please. Okay, we all know that. I do. I got a victim of today. But secured by the NSEC. Okay, majority is not, so why the hell? Call it now. connection is either partly encrypted or completely broken. Does that add to your trust feeling? No. Signed by DT shirt. Still fell out. Pretty recent. In general, you should say what you do. Not much say I say that. You should do what you say. Have regulations, have procedures, and act on that. Some companies lost their existence not doing that. And prove it. Prove it again, for that's trust. You have to maintain trust. 
in general. And that's accreditation of CAs is problematic. It cannot be true that Ubuntu is validating Vivisign. It cannot be true that a very few companies, Microsoft, Vivisign, Mozilla, no, uh, Mozilla, Vivisign, no, uh, Mozilla, Microsoft, and some others, Opera, etc., are dictating the trust in the world. They are not able to check it. You are not checking if they do their job right. So why the hell should we trust CAs? There's a lot of things going wrong there. And the power is there. So an idea is to license a CA. License a CA to be a CA. We have not done that. And I think we should do that. <clears throat> and not only license it, but check it. Control it. Check it. Check it. Check it. Make sure that the certificate application to configurations are done well. Assess them. Check them. Currently, it's not the case. Still going a lot of trouble here. But I must say, from my statistic, after a year, show quite a lot of improvement. But you're not there. Names on certificate is a whole piece. You learned that with the assert the names of individuals. It's hopeless. Passports with names are hopeless. It's very hard to make sure that the guy is the then who says yes. Even community doesn't help much there. My conclusion is certificate gives a false sense of trust. Okay. You asked for it. What can I say about the DG Nota? Uh, I must say, Fox ID, RT, did a report. I don't know if you have read that. You can uh, get that from the website of Fox ID. And I have read it, and I must say, a pretty good report. However, it doesn't mention about procedures, written documentation, and how they were kept, and what they did with it. It doesn't say any word, and I think that's wrong. The CA accreditation, the CA teaching note, was slow. Lacking and unacceptable, the review of the configuration. My statistics show that a year ago it was okay, and half of August I did another one, so that was before the publications. And it fall back to C rate. And that's unacceptable as a CA. There is a lot of political power going on to please wait, wait, don't revoke it. No, it's broken. You can't, you have to revoke it immediately. Not wait four or five days. Not even if a minister is saying. And what do you do with all the signed sig signatures in the central archive from the notaries here in Holland? All the notaries, all their contracts to central archive, it's signed by the notary. And that certificate where they sign with is signed by the key notary. So you have to make an expression about that, a declaration about that. How you deal with that? I think it can be still trusted, but you have to make a declaration about it. <coughs> November 2010. Hacking showed it could be expected. So only the question is when <coughs> and how intelligent that is applied. And I can say that there has been certificates around with wildcards. Star dot star dot com. <laughs> Signed on the 
I think I'm start with address. Star dot star dot org. How clever can you be as a hacker? This showed intelligence. For in essence, it's not the fault of teaching note in this case. It's the fault of the system that it allows to, to have a certificate around star.com. It's a lot more to say about um, Good accreditation, certificates for individuals, more as one CA who signs the certificate. That's the PGP community green. Review, review, review and control. Measurements and force. And make sure that they are compliant with standards. There are standards who dictate what you should do, which regulations you should have, which documentation you should have around. Make sure that it is done well. Namely, you have to do a lot of things. Okay, news. Friday, next Friday. In the late afternoon, Argentina time, when themselves. There will be a show by Juliana Ritchie, that's the one. He made the Trojan horse piece. It can decrypt and encrypt with a speed, a magnificent speed of two seconds per byte to access a PayPal account using TSL1.0. All TSL1.0 and below are if you know what it is. Not SSL. In November I said SSL should be avoided and you should use TSL. I don't say that now, but I think this move, well, it can be done. You have, to certain, you have to make sure that it is patched, so that will take a while. And how is it done? It's a JavaScript. With a network sniffer, uh, sniffer. And that cookie gives you grant access to restricted user accounts. It works even with strict transport security, ASTS. You have to write it down if you want to see the whole article. This is uh, what is uh, made public um, two days ago. Okay. We need to make sure that the configuration is well done on both endpoints. It is my shame, sure, that is done in your browser and you can do something about it. You can make sure that the, that the particular uh, instance for e-banking, it's pay card, uh, I, I have to look that up, the I stands for, um, Data Secured uh, Services, DSS 2. And I must say that's a pretty weak standard. It's only saying that you have to use a strong sieber. And what the hell is a strong sieber? Opinions may differ. E-commerce. FIPS. 142. No one, no site in Holland. In my test set, at least. Is compliant with this one. It's pretty heavy. You have to do a lot. But it can be done. And you have tools that you can use yourself. OpenSSL, it's a pretty Swiss army knife. SSL scan, SSL sniff, and you can, or you see just SSL labs 
where you can see those assessments and can do your assessments by yourself. Where you have to look for is your third K. Okay? No MD5 used, no SSG1, minimal 1 K bits, no SSL2.0, still about 40% of the sites use that. Turn it off. Enable secure deconnotation, not an easy one, you have to do that. Lots of banks don't support it. Uh, for there is an, uh, an, a Debian problem there. Debian refuses to patch their software to enable that. Get to the, to the SSL Labs rating. Make sure it is more than 85%. There is even a uh, DH, Dilly Huffman support. There is no middle in it. Man in the middle possibility. The SSL labs will show, figures will show that to you. And make sure that you adjust your browser for IFIX 140. You can do that. You can say to your Firefox for I want to use or allow only those sites who can talk to me with IFIX 140. If you are in touch, do your banking with ING, you might run into Levels, so we have to lower security a bit. And okay. You know then what you're doing, you know what you trust. And do not refuse to talk to insecure figure you use, civil use. Okay. I think I have come now to the statistics. So my uh, uh, suggestion is that we have 15 minutes break. Yeah. Then I can. And so everybody, I expect them to be back in quarter past eight. It took one hour. I estimated that it will cost me three quarters of an hour. But okay. Sorry for that. Thank you.